In this podcast episode, Donald Hoffman, a cognitive neuroscientist, discusses his groundbreaking work on the nature of reality and consciousness. He explains that his research suggests our perception of reality, including space, time, and physical objects, is not an accurate representation of objective reality, but rather a kind of user interface or headset that evolution has given us to navigate the world effectively. Hoffman argues that the chance that evolution has shaped our sensory systems to see objective reality is precisely zero, based on mathematical models of evolutionary fitness functions. Hoffman elaborates on how Darwin's theory of evolution shapes our sensory systems for adaptive behavior, not for perceiving truth. He explains that the payoff functions guiding evolution don't contain information about the true structure of objective reality. This leads to the counterintuitive conclusion that our perceptions, including fundamental concepts like space and time, are more like a virtual reality interface than a window on truth. Hoffman uses the analogy of a virtual reality headset to explain how our perceptions relate to underlying reality. Just as a VR game hides the complex computer code and presents a simplified interface for gameplay, our perceptions of objects in space and time are a simplified interface that hides a deeper, more complex reality. This idea is supported by recent developments in physics, such as the failure of local realism and the discovery of geometric structures outside of space-time. The implications of this view are profound. Hoffman suggests that objects, including our own bodies and brains, don't exist in the form we think they do when they're not perceived. This challenges fundamental assumptions about the nature of reality and consciousness. He emphasizes that this view doesn't diminish the importance of neuroscience or other scientific disciplines, but rather suggests that the reality behind our perceptions is far more complex than we currently understand. Hoffman proposes a theory called conscious realism, or idealism, which posits that consciousness is fundamental and that physical reality as we perceive it is a projection or construction of consciousness. This view contrasts with physicalist approaches that try to explain consciousness as emerging from physical processes in the brain. Hoffman argues that there's no evidence for how computational or neural processes could create specific conscious experiences. He discusses the differences between his approach and other theories like panpsychism, emphasizing that his theory aims to show how the laws of physics and space-time itself can emerge from more fundamental principles of consciousness. Hoffman is working on developing rigorous mathematical models to describe consciousness and its relationship to perceived reality. Hoffman discusses the potential scientific and technological implications of this new understanding of consciousness and reality. He suggests that once we understand the software behind space-time, we might be able to develop revolutionary technologies such as new forms of transportation that don't require moving through space-time in conventional ways. He also speculates about potential applications in medicine and other fields. Hoffman emphasizes the importance of developing rigorous, testable scientific theories based on these ideas. He mentions ongoing work to create mathematical models that could potentially explain phenomena like quantum mechanics and even make new predictions about physical reality. The conversation touches on connections between Hoffman's scientific work and various philosophical and spiritual traditions. He notes similarities between his ideas and concepts from Eastern philosophy and mystical traditions, such as the idea that ultimate reality transcends any description or conceptualization. He discusses the value of meditation and other practices for gaining insight into the nature of consciousness and reality. Hoffman emphasizes the humbling implications of these ideas, suggesting that even our most advanced scientific theories are likely to be trivial compared to the true nature of reality. He argues that this perspective can serve as an antidote to dogmatism in both science and spirituality. Hoffman addresses several challenges and criticisms of his ideas. He discusses the apparent logical paradox of using evolutionary theory to argue against the reality of physical objects explaining that this is actually a strength of good scientific theories, they can reveal their own limitations. He also addresses concerns about the practical implications of these ideas, emphasizing that the subjective experiences of pain, joy, and other sensations 
are still real and important, even if they're not reflections of an objective physical reality. Hoffman discusses the importance of both rigorous mathematics and periods of silence or meditation in developing new scientific insights. He argues that mathematics allows us to explore the scope and limits of our theories with precision, while periods of silence can allow for creative breakthroughs that transcend our existing conceptual frameworks. Hoffman describes ongoing research efforts to develop more sophisticated mathematical models of consciousness and its relationship to perceived reality. He mentions collaborations with other researchers and efforts to connect his ideas with cutting-edge work in theoretical physics, such as the study of positive geometries that exist outside of space-time. Hoffman expresses hope that these new approaches could lead to breakthroughs in our understanding of phenomena like quantum mechanics and potentially open up new technological possibilities. He emphasizes the need for rigorous scientific testing and validation of these ideas. The conversation concludes with reflections on the implications of these ideas for our understanding of self and reality. Hoffman suggests that what we truly are transcends any description or conceptualization, including our usual sense of self. He argues that recognizing this can lead to a more expansive and less dogmatic view of reality and our place in it. Hoffman speculates that the purpose of our limited perspectives might be for the infinite consciousness to explore and know itself from different viewpoints. He emphasizes that while these ideas can be intellectually challenging, they also offer a profound and potentially liberating way of understanding our existence. Throughout the conversation, Hoffman presents a radical reimagining of the nature of reality and consciousness. His ideas challenge fundamental assumptions about the physical world and our place in it, suggesting that what we perceive as reality is more like a virtual interface than an objective truth. While these concepts can be difficult to grasp and have profound implications, he argues that they offer a more coherent explanation of various scientific and philosophical puzzles than conventional physicalist approaches. Hoffman emphasizes the need for continued rigorous scientific investigation of these ideas, including the development of testable mathematical models. He also highlights the potential practical applications of this new understanding, from revolutionary technologies to new approaches in medicine and other fields. The conversation touches on deep philosophical and spiritual themes, drawing connections between cutting-edge science and ancient wisdom traditions. Hoffman suggests that these ideas can lead to a more humble and open-minded approach to understanding reality, recognizing the limitations of our perceptions and concepts while still valuing the richness of our subjective experiences. Ultimately, Hoffman's work points towards a view of reality that is far more mysterious and expansive than our everyday perceptions suggest. It invites us to question our most basic assumptions about the nature of existence and opens up new possibilities for scientific exploration and personal understanding.